Hey, good evening, everybody. It is evening for me. Um, man, our days are really getting long right now. It's after 8 p.m. and the sun's still way up. So uh, our days are getting real, real, real long, which is good. We need that. So um going to pray up and ask God to be with us and uh, let's talk about a few things. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise you and adore you and we thank you, Father. Thank you for another day on this beautiful planet that you made. Despite what everybody says, it's not uh, coming apart at the seams and wheels aren't getting ready to fall off. It's you built this planet to take quite a bit and you designed it to filter us out. No problem. We're burning the same stuff that we're burning anyway. The earth's doing what it does. It's recycling what it recycles. It's just one awesome, big, huge self filtering, self healing machine. And, uh, we're in awe of what you've created here, Lord. And, um, doesn't mean that we can abuse it, but, uh, it's not coming apart like everybody's screaming bloody murder that it is. And using that as an excuse to do all their other stuff. So, Lord God, we just pray that uh, you would just give us, uh, just clear vision and discernment of what's really the truth. And, um, we're looking to you now, Father God, for some more wisdom and some more inward reflection lord that we can really be honest with ourselves right now and take a real close look at who we are and how we're operating here and what we're doing and um we pray that your holy spirit will be upon us we pray lord that you'll lead god and protect us through this uh study tonight and we ask all of these things in jesus name amen all right I had to say something about the climate change garbage uh. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Uh, no, it's not. So anyway, let's, let's get on with what I feel led to talk about. And, and, you know, I get, I, I get some comments about me, you know, being maybe a little bit too self reflective. I guess is that how I could put it that I, why are you so hard on yourself, dude? Um, I see that a lot. Why are you so hard on yourself and, and things relating to that? So <coughs> it's just the way I'm wired and it's just been my life's experience. And I can kind of, I can kind of go over this and, and tell you why. Um, you know, I've always looked into my own life, always. I've always looked into my own performance. Um, not because anybody's told me that I'm doing bad. Um, I've always cared about how well I do things in my life. I've always cared about that. I always worked hard. What I lacked in personality, I always made up for with hard work. I mean, I've had bosses where, man, I can't Damn that sucker, but man, he works his ass off. I can't fire him. I can't, I can't get, man, you know, what I lacked in personality, I always made up for with hard work. And, and so, um, you know, I, I've always, I've always critiqued. I'm my, I'm my biggest critic. Every, everything, all my construction projects, if I make a piece of furniture, if I, build a smokehouse or I could always have done this a little better or I could have done that or I could have added this or you know and and same way with you know flying I could have oh I could I could have always dialed it in just a little tighter right could have I mean just and so I think that's a healthy attitude to have to wanting to always improve okay so when it comes to God me personally I think that's a big attribute. That's a big personality trait to have as a Christian. They can always improve. They can always step it up to not up a notch and you can always 
do better. So, um, that's just how I'm wired. No one's ever beat me up or abused me or, you know, put all this, you know, my stepfather was, was very, very tough on me. So he always expected me to try hard. And, and he always expected me to do better. So maybe that's where it came from. I don't know, but I think it's a good personality trait to have and, and, and to be humble about it. I'm not doing it to be a wise guy, a know it all, a show off. I mean, I've done a lot of things in my life. And I'm not bragging, but man, I got pretty damn good at them. I got real good at them. You know, I used to race motorcycles. I can drag my elbows and my knees around the corners like the rest of those dudes, man. And <laughs> a lot of practice, a lot of high sides, a lot of low sides, a lot of, <laughs> you know, that's what they make leathers for. You know, you buy a $3,000 set of leathers so you don't have a $50,000 set of skin grafts. Uh, <laughs> makes sense, right? That's why you wear leathers and helmets and gloves and all that crap. So, you know, let that have the, you know, <laughs> let that take the road rash, not you. But so, I mean, you know, I just like to try hard. I like to, I like to get good at different things. And, um, I, I really don't have any desire to try brain surgery yet or, or, Anything like that. I don't want to get good at doing, you know, but, uh, you know, in my, in my personal Christian walk, I mean, I, I try to try to get better. And, and so anyway, uh, quick story about my motorcycle career. Um, um, God let my last motorcycle get stolen and he let it get stolen. And, um, uh, it was a Hayabusa. If you guys know, if you motorcycle dudes knows, knows what that machine, machine is. And so I, I had two of them. <laughs> I used to take that to the racetrack. Okay. <laughs> ah! They'd kill me, man, in the turns, but man, I'd get them in the straight. I'd pass them all. And, <laughs> and then I'd have to slow that big damn thing down and, and lay it over as hard as I could lay it over drag my elbows and my knees around the corners and those guys had lighter, quicker bikes and they'd always jump in front of me. And then as soon as the road got straight again, boom, I was ahead of them. But, uh, he let that get stolen and <laughs> thank God that you, that he did. Um, and, uh, because, you know, I was going to hurt myself. <laughs> I was, I was going to, I was just getting a little bit too, a little too cocky. And, and so little, not humble anymore. I was just like, yeah, man, let's just go. Let's twist this throttle as hard as I could do it. And so he let that get stolen. And there were some other things that I needed to really be paying attention to besides screwing around on motorcycles. And, and that was my wife. And I really needed to be at work on Mondays, you know, uninjured. And so, uh, but you know, I really tried hard. I, 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 I really, that's why I never got into helicopters because I'd get addicted to that. But, uh, enough about me. All right. Let's, let's get back to what we're talking about. I like to try hard. And, and so th that's, that's how I am. So I, I think that it's important that we stay humble and we try hard in front of God. So I'm going to read second Timothy and it's three, one through five. And I think I just uh, read this not too long ago, but we're going to, we're going to talk about it again, but this, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And then it says from such people turn away from. So going back to being humble and 
and reflecting, self-reflective, evaluating yourself. I mean, look how many of those things that covers, it, especially, um, I mean, especially um, the first one, lovers of themselves. So, um, you know, I, I just, I always look into my life and, and I always look, what can I find, you know, that, you know, I, I can, I guess, repent of, um, be humble about and, and so let's, let's keep going. There's some scriptures here that'll kind of reinforce why you need to have that kind of an attitude with God. And, and, and so none of us are immune to sin. None of us are immune to being prideful. None of us are immune to loving ourselves a little bit, you know, being a little arrogant um, loving, you know, liking money quite a bit. And so I, I really think that when you, when you, when these people that really love them, themselves, I found that most of these people are very secure, pretty set <coughs> financially. So you, you kind of, Man, if you're, if you're, if you got, if God's blessed you and you, you've got some cash, boy, it's real easy to kind of love yourself, ain't it? So those two right there together. So, you know, maybe that's a reason why I'm humble. I've never been rich. I've, I've always had to work. I've always had to save for things. I've always had to. I, I've never had anything just handed to me or given to me. And I mean, God's blessed me and, and I've had good paying jobs, but I never, I never let me making a good living ever jack with my attitude about being humble or about being repentant or or anything like that. So it, it's, so anyway, um, you know, we are not as spiritual as we think we are. We're not as religious as we think we are. We're not as good as we think we are. We're not as godly as we think we are, or we would want other people to believe. We're, I, I, I realize that. I realize that I'm really, I'm something to God, but I'm really, I'm nothing. And in the big scheme of things, I mean, who the heck am I? Just another hairy dude, just like all the other hairy dudes that's ever lived. And what's special about me? So I keep saying this, I'm just glad to be in the door. I'm just, I'm just glad to be a part of God's group. I'm just glad to be here. And so I, I personally... Try to stay humble. I, I I take a lot of satisfaction at getting something done right and doing something well and being good at it. But I do that for me. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I really have never gave a crap about what anybody else thinks. Never. And I always, that's my personal thing is I like going out there, set my mind to something new and going out there and being good at it or getting good at it, or learning how to get good at it. So, um, for no other reason, for just me liking to tackle hard things to do and, and you know, just, just to conquer. Um, you know, just like, just like everything I've ever done in my life. I always like going after it, putting in a lot of effort, working hard at it, and, and coming out being pretty, pretty technically proficient. So, um, back to, we're not as, we're not as, we're not as good as we would really like other people to think as far as our religious stuff goes or our godliness goes or our righteousness. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, just like it was saying, appearing 
um, you know, to, uh, um, have a form of godliness, but at the same time, um, kind of denying the power of the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how to explain it, but they act all religious and righteous and godly, but they are denying the truth, the, the real truth. And, and, and so I, and a lot of times, I mean, you don't, you don't see, you don't really see the Holy Spirit in these people. You don't. And man, that's not a good thing. Um, so, um, there's a Bible verse, Philippians 2 12. It talks about working out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. And, and so I've always taken that verse pretty serious and I've, and it just tells me, man, when you're not being humble and you're being a little arrogant and a little cocky, then boy, that's a red flag. And, and so, um, that, that God really disapproves of that. And I guess throughout my whole Christian walk and from the, the basic things that I get from who we need to be and, and number one on the list is being humble, not being arrogant and not loving yourself. Um, so that's just me. Um, Romans eight thirteen. Let's flip over to eight thir Romans eight thirteen. It's talking about uh, putting to death the things of the flesh, right? So let's go to Romans. Let's go to eight thirteen. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body. You will live. So, I don't know. To me, being arrogant and being cocky is is just living by the flesh. And just being a sinful person. So, instead of like robbing grocery stores or mugging old ladies. I mean, that's sinful, right? But if you're being arrogant and you're being, you know, a jerk, you're being a know-it-all, you're being whatever, that's being sinful. That's living by the flesh. So again, it, it's just me. How I'm wired is that, man, I don't even want to go there. And, and so I feel worse about that than I would be. I would never go knock over a grocery store, but that's something that you do all the time, every day, all day long, if you live that way and you're that type of person. So, I mean, if you go knock over one grocery store and then you go, oh, crap, what the heck did I just do? But when you're living like that all the time, man, and you don't even realize it, not good. So, um, you know, like I said, um, for me, the, the My number one thing is to, is to stay humble. And my number one thing is to, um, not be arrogant. And that's just me. And, and to me, that's showing, that's me bowing down. That's me submitting to God. That's not, not, that's not me trying to be somebody down here, be important or be the center of attention or, and you know, I mean, you know, I don't know all the reasons why I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really trying to stay humble, but that's the only thing I can really think of. And, um, you know, and, and I guess too, um, 
I've had good jobs. I've, I've made good money, but at the same time, it's not like an overabundance where I could just be filthy rich. And so God's kept me humble by not letting me be filthy rich. And, and he's, I've always, I've always needed him to keep providing. He's always provided, but I, I always need him to keep providing. And there's been time in my life where my budget and my operating costs were way up here. And, and, and so, um, you know, I didn't love that money, just a tool. It was a tool that I needed to use to have the other tools that I needed to go do what I needed to do to get that tool. So, um, anyway, um, I don't want to love myself or I don't love my love money above God. I don't want to love myself or I don't want to love money above God. I want to, I want to love him first. And, and like the verse, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will be added onto you. So because I put God first and because I was humble, he gave me all the other stuff that I needed. He gave me the money. He gave me the tools that I needed to. And so I guess I know where it all comes from. All good things come from above. All good things come from above. That's exactly right. And, and so another reason to stay humble. An another reason not to be arrogant. Another reason to not love myself. And, and another reason to, to have from reverence for God, respect for God, be repentant, be humble. Because I, I really like the good stuff from above that God gives me. And I don't want to cut that off. I don't want him to have a reason to cut it off. I'm not doing it to get those things. But it sure is nice. It sure makes life a lot easier, right? And and so um, a lot of people are just really, really ungrateful. And I really, I don't take nothing for granted. Nothing. I don't care how small it is. And maybe I don't know how I got wired that way either. That's just me. I could have four flat tires and I would be grateful that I have one spare tire and jack and a lug wrench. I would be grateful. All I need now is three tires. You know, I need them repaired. So, I mean, you know, that's the way I always look at life. And, and so, for whatever reason, I mean... <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for God's goodness. I'm grateful for his mercy. I'm grateful for his patience. I'm grateful for, um, his protection. I'm, I'm grateful for everything that he is in my life. I'm grateful for all the stuff that he provides. So, I mean, if you love yourself, then how can you at the same time be grateful to God for? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, man. So, um, like this, like this verses, these verses are talking about, um, you know, people will have this outward appearance of being godly. They will have this outward appearance of being, um, religious. They will have this outward appearance, but Inside, they're really not. And unfortunately, I, I mean, I, I, I've known many, 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 many people like that, many. And I, I have a, a lot of people that I still know that are that way. They're nice people. They're great. They're, they're kind people. They're caring people, but I worry about them. They're not humble and they're not grateful. They're not, I don't know. That's, that's what's in your heart. And that's the only thing that, that's the only thing that God can get a true read on and, and have an honest look at. And, and Bible talks everywhere about what's in your heart. Okay. So, um, anyway, um,
so what's going on right now on the planet and all the things that are happening i i just i really feel led and and a lot of these talks here lately have been about making sure that you're right with god and so i just again feel it's really important given the the, the time that we're in and the short amount of time that it appears that we have left here that um that people really look at themselves and and just go through this list go go through you know this scripture um you know second timothy chapter 3 what what it's going to be like in the last days god gives us a really good detailed list um lovers of themselves lovers of money Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, unself-controlled, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I mean, all this list, it's good, it's a good like the departure checklist, right? Just go through that list and be honest and say, and, and then go to God and say, Hey, am I doing any of this stuff? If I am, I apologize. And, and if I am, will you please help me not be that way anymore? So, I mean, you know, getting right with God, making sure there's not going to be anything standing in your way when, when God gives Jesus the order, all right, enough's enough, go get him. And, and so, um, I mean, just re really just be, that's, that's the beauty of this. You could really be honest with God and be honest with yourself and, and you confess your sins, right? <clears throat> know that Jesus forgives you for that. It's go and sin no more. He's that cool about it. And I, you know, when I say God's cooler than you think, that's, that's what I mean. When we confess our sins, we are forgiven of those. And, and that's, I guess, the biggest cool part about this is that he knows, he understands. So, um, I, again, I, I just, I want to make sure that none of that stuff's in me. I, I want to make sure that none of that stuff's in me. And, you know, I don't, I don't want something stupid. All that stuff is, it's stupid. I don't want that, I don't want that to be on me or, or be the reason why Jesus might say, Hey, you know what? I think you need a little, a little bit of work, a little more work, a little more time to, to get yourself right and have to stay here. During the tribulation, I, man, I do not want to hear that. I don't know about you. You do not want to be here. I keep saying that over and over and over. You do not want to be here. You want to make the first flight. So, you know, this is just a, just a, man, a real, like I've been saying all along, just try to keep it simple. <clears throat> just going through the departure checklist. <clears throat> There's actually not a departure checklist in an airplane you got you know your pre-start your start your taxi you you you, you but I've, i there's there's a you know we've had an arrival checklist before descent checklist and end range checklist things approach checklist but um i can't remember any airplane I ever flew where it was a departure um we've we've had a you know before takeoff, after takeoff, climb check, uh, you know, maybe this is the climb check. We're not in the climb yet, but we're getting ready to depart. So, um, just, a, just a self review. Okay. And, and, um, let's, let's go back to repentance. Let's talk about repenting. And, and a lot of people, man, they, they just will not, when they mess up, fess up. They could be dead wrong and refuse to admit, hey, I was wrong. I'm so sorry I was wrong. They won't apologize. Man, is that the haughty thing? Is that what it means to be haughty? 
proud. I mean, if you're that kind of a person that you just, you, you screw up, make a mistake, and you just absolutely refuse, you'd die first before you admitted that you were wrong. I, that's a serious issue. And, and you know what, being a Christian, <laughs> when I, when I could honestly just flat out tell God, I am dead wrong, dude. <laughs> I messed up. That's the life. That's the day my life changed. If I mess up, I, I am the first to admit it. Man, I screwed that up. That was my fault. You know, I high sided my motorcycle on the track. I didn't blame it on the dude ahead of me, or I didn't blame it on the gravel. I didn't blame it on the tires. I didn't blame it on the heat. I didn't blame it on, it was my fault. <laughs> I didn't try to get out of it. Everybody and their dog blamed somebody else for their screw ups. That's a huge, big, ginormous problem on the planet today. Nobody is willing to admit they're wrong. They screwed up and then they won't even, they won't even apologize. So man, anyway, that, that just came out and, and, Let's, let's go, um, I'm looking for Philippians 2.12. All right, I think you got it marked. All right. Let's just flip to my Philippians 2.12. All right, here we go. Uh, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So, when you're messing up and fessing up, I really think it's a good idea to be sincerely humble about that and to be sincerely, sincerely repentive about it. And like, yeah, I made a mistake. No big deal. And you know, yeah, whatever. Goes back to the haughty thing, right? You're going to be haughty with God. It's a thing, man. It's on the list. He doesn't like it. And I, I sure don't like it when people like that with me. You know, it's nice when they're a little, when they're sincere. I am really sorry that I said that that was mean and I, I take it back and I, will you forgive me? I'm like, absolutely. I don't give a shit what you do to me. Excuse the French. I don't have the duck. I have had very, very few people that actually have done that. And you know what? There's no way I cannot forgive them when they are that humble about it and they are that sincere. Jim, I am sorry that I did this to you. I, I made a mistake and I apologize. And will you forgive me? And they're sincere. I don't give a crap what they did. I am going to forgive them. Are you kidding me? That melts my heart. How do you think God feels about that when you're honest with him and you're sincere with him? Of course, he's going to forgive you. It's an automatic. It may take us some time. There's some people that can do some horrible, hideous things. But when they're just, you know, being a person and being angry or said something insulted you, you know, you know what I mean? This is kind of unrelated and a little bit out of context, but I was reading this in First Corinthians 15 and verse 31. And Paul was talking about something totally different, but I kind of caught this in there where he's like, he says, I die daily. And I, I took that to mean to himself. And they were talking about some other stuff. They were talking about something totally different. But Paul slipped that in, that I die daily. And, and to finish what he was saying was to myself. And so... You know, I, I try to die daily to myself. And and I think it's a great idea to be that way with God. I'm his servant. He's in charge. I'm a slave to him, but I am free. I'm a free slave. I'm a volu I voluntarily 
enslave myself and follow him, but I am free. Same time. Uh, but, you know, I always have the attitude with him that I can do better. And, and let's go to Proverbs 28, 13. So I love Proverbs. You can't go wrong reading any of the Proverbs. So 28, 13 says, he who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So I confess them and I forsake them. Try not to do it again. I need all of God's grace, mercy, all the good things from above. I need all of them I can get. So I'm going to go to Isaiah 55 and then we'll wrap this up. I'm getting done a little bit quicker than I'm trying to keep them a little bit short. 55 verses, verse six, seven, seek the Lord while he, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and let the unrighteous man and the unrighteous man, his thoughts, let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to God and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon God does abundantly pardon us. Jesus does abundantly forgive our sins. If you profess, if you profess or, or confess your sins, he will abundantly pardon us. If you're humble with him and when you mess up, fess up. And, and if you live with that humility and you have that attitude, um, so... Again, what's going on, on the planet, how close it seems. I'm doing everything I possibly can to be right. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that my family's right. I mean, we're, we're, we, are, we are having, we have never, ever had any more serious conversations about what it really means to be a Christian than we are right now. And man, that's wonderful. Awesome. And, and so we're all we're all checking ourselves to make sure we're all humbling ourselves to make sure we're all, I mean, I, I flat, man, we're, we're trying to make ourselves right with our friends, with every, our family, everybody that we know, just, we are trying to get right with everybody. And I encourage everybody to do the same. And, um, so anyway, we, I, we talked about praying for our enemies, not having to love them, but I, I made it a point where I sat and I really honestly and, and wholeheartedly prayed for some people that, um, I do not like. <laughs> They're doing mean, mean stuff. And so, you know, uh, we're all growing. We're all getting there, right? We're trying to get there. We're all in this together. We're all just trying to get there. I'm just throwing, trying to throw my two cents worth in. If you want to listen to it on how I'm getting there. And again, it goes back to sharing with other people what God's sharing with me. So um, anyway, God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your evening and we will talk to you later.